it was clear that we love traveling. Yeah, we've always traveled the last yeah. 15 years. And so I came up one day with the idea like, well, you know, for the same money, we could buy a bus and just driving down to New Zealand. But basically it came out of a very poor decision. We didn't have any money and wanted to go to New Zealand. <laughs> it was way too expensive just for a holiday. The idea was only driving down to New Zealand in about one and a half years. Yeah, well, now it's three and a half and we just came to Australia. We skipped New Zealand, unfortunately. And yeah, three and a half years, they have flown by like, you know, like weeks. Kind of like, you know, so it doesn't feel like three and a half years. Have you ever dreamed about traveling around the world with your family? I know I certainly have, and we are working on it. But this week we have our guest, Akela World, who are doing this trip right now. They left Europe about three and a half years ago in a truck that they worked on for well over a year. And they have stories to share from Central Asia, from the South Pacific, from the Middle East. I mean, you name it. They have border crossing stories. They have breakdown stories. They've getting stuck stories they have you know photos from some of the most amazing parts of the world you've ever seen and and they've just really done it all it's, a, it's an incredible journey that they have done so far and that they are on right now so we had the pleasure of hosting Leander, Maria, and Lennox in Joshua Tree a few weeks ago as they prepared to get their truck and, you know, cast their fortunes here in the United States and Canada and Mexico. We will be traveling together hopefully later this year on the Pan American Highway. And in the meantime, these guys are stranded here in the States uh, during this coronavirus epidemic. So, you know, if you're interested in hearing some good stories or want to connect with these guys, I'm sure that they would love to to meet you because they are actually they were meant to be in Canada just about already but they are unable to leave the country so you know just wanted to give a shout out to these guys for sticking it out in some challenging times and if you know anybody in the west is interested in connecting with them they will be traveling around here and their plans are certainly evolving as the days go on so I hope you guys enjoy the show this week these guys are super courageous and and have a great story to share. What's up, everybody? We are out in the North Joshua Tree BLM land today with Maria and Leander from Akela World. These guys have been overlanding around the world for the past three years. They left Austria and headed east all the way across, well, they're going to tell us, maybe the Silk Road and beyond, and uh, through the islands of the Pacific. And now they've, they've made their way to the western shores of North America, where the Pan American version of their road will commence. So welcome to the show, guys. Thanks. Thanks a lot. So the Rewilding Parenthood podcast is really all about inspiring other parents to take their next step. And I think everybody that's sitting there with kids at home has, you know, maybe found you guys or had heard nothing about you and are wondering like, okay, how do I travel around the world? And you guys have made it happen. And I know it's taken a lot of courage and a lot of hard work and sweat equity to make that happen. And that's really what the show is all about is trying to uncover those parts of the story and not just the glory of what life can be on the road. As we all know that those of us doing it, it's a little bit harder work than we make it seem on Instagram. Suffering since three and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> not that bad. Um, so why don't we start with a little bit about you, introduce yourselves and you know where we're at today. What does what does today look like in the States? So yeah, my name is Leander and I'm from Austria. And as Colin already said, we've been traveling from Austria to the United States, always eastwards through Central Asia and the eastern part of Asia, Southeast Asia, Australia, and now we're we've arrived in Los Angeles in well, in California actually, in Joshua Tree. Um I'm Maria part of this team <laughs> and who makes up the rest of your tribe the rest of our tribe is our eight-year-old son lennox and of course our truck whose name is akela and tell me a little bit about where that name came from well that's easy explained all of us we love the story of mowgli 
the little boy growing up in the Indian the jungle. jungle. Yeah, the jungle book. And the leading wolf, his name was Akela. So we named our truck as Akela as well. He's protecting us. He's our leading wolf, kind of. The pack is like a family. Yeah. Um, so for those of you listening, I'm just going to give you just a little bit of a visual description of what this truck looks like because none of you, I promise, have ever seen one before. <laughs> <laughs> because most of you say the same thing about our van and our van is like the little brother <laughs> or the little sister of Akela. <laughs> so Akela is a 10 ton 1977 Mercedes 911. 911. So what that means it's a 9 ton. It means it can carry up to 9 tons and has 110 horsepower, which is not really correct because it we can carry 9.5 tons and have 130 horsepower, but well, that's what it's supposed to mean. And so you got the truck and stripped it down to its chassis, so it was just like wheels and truck frame. Yeah. And then where did the design come from to build this kind of frame upon it? I mean, you're, you're sitting at almost four meters tall. You carry... 400 liters of water 300. 300 300 liters of water 500 liters of diesel two spare tires a motorbike lennox tools and books. heaps of stuff <laughs> heaps of stuff we're a wood stove we're actually sitting in here right now it's super comfortable there's tons of space you wouldn't have even imagined that you are sitting in a vehicle unless it's moving down the road <laughs> <laughs> yeah the idea always was like well, when we've had to make the decision like rebuilding the truck from scratch, which was never the plan, we just wanted to buy the truck and, you know, like rebuild like the inside, new furniture, new bed and like, yeah, let's hit the road. And um, it came a bit un uh, unexpected that the truck was not really in that good shape as we would have wished for. And so we started actually from the subframe on and constructed the whole cabin and everything. And a big part or a big reason why, we, why it looks like is that we didn't really want to get like the proper camping feeling. Well, it sounds a bit awkward, I know, but uh, it feels like home inside, you know, everything is like a lot of wood. It, for us, it feels like home, like an Alpine chalet, you know. It's important being that long on the road, you need a feeling of being at home, not jumping into your van. You want to be at home. So that's why we choose lots of wood and stuff like that here. Yeah put all the photos on the walls and yeah absolutely i i mean i'm just looking around at antlers from australia australia we've yeah. got it's a mix of everything safe yeah. self-made stuff and our photos bought stuff gifts so it's a mix of everything beautiful so tell me a little bit about what life was like that led you to this decision as to why traveling around the world was something that you thought would be the next best thing for your family or, or the best thing that you could do together. Well, but basically it came out of a very poor decision. We didn't have any money and wanted to go to New Zealand. <laughs> well, we both love traveling. I was working in travel agencies the last couple of years, so it was clear that we love traveling. Yeah, we've always traveled but, the last 15 yeah. years and um it's always been too last time in in foreign countries you know you just arrive feel comfy figure out few stuff and then you have to think about flying back home so you don't get an idea of the country you've been you don't see the culture nothing so yeah, and we especially saw new zealand was actually the bigger problem because it's so far away flight tickets for three people and a camper van for whatever you know, like two three months it was way too expensive just for a holiday and so i came up one day with the idea like well you know for the same money we could buy a bus and just driving down to new zealand and um you know like that was like <laughs> the first naive ideas uh, sitting on the couch having a glass of red wine yeah and dreaming the fancy lifestyle yeah <laughs> great and checking out some people on instagram that maybe no, the thing, actually, yeah. no the the thing when we started so we've started about more than six years ago with the whole idea and planning so back then there was no van life you know so it was really hard actually to build the vehicle but there were some overlanders there was no van exists. life not really now and you know like especially traveling with kids was not really common back then so there were barely families around um one day a friend of, of us like told us like he did a, a bus trip a road trip around south america for two years and he recommended that we should buy a truck and we're like i mean a truck sounds like pretty exaggerated you know like truck 
everything's like big and heavy and we're like oh, you know bus might be fine as well but um in the whole researching process actually we've realized that you know like you want to bring kid stuff and you have fuel and you bring your skiing gear and your climbing gear and we all these kind of that the drug would be a best the best solution for us yeah yeah it, it looks um like you guys are comfy on the road and you have everything that that you need which i mean you walk in here and i just see you know, under Lennox's bed in the back, it's just like, oh man, you could get just chests of gold and <laughs> gear back there. And yeah, all all kinds of things that... A lot of tools and spare parts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lots of oil filters and... Uh, yeah. He's collecting them. Yeah, don't get rid of the old one, just in case. <laughs> Um, so what was it like with your community back home as, you know, maybe in private, you were planning this over glasses of wine at night. And then as you started to share this with your friends, what was their feedback when you said you're going to overland? Was it to overland the world or? No, basically the idea was only driving down to New Zealand in about one and a half years. So that was the idea. Yeah. Well, like three and a half and we just came to Australia. We skipped New Zealand, unfortunately. And yeah, three and a half years, they have flown by like, you know, like weeks, kind of like, you know, so it doesn't feel like three and a half years. And, um, but the question was our friends at home. I'm I sorry. think most of our friends at home <clears throat> still don't get what we are doing here. So sometimes I think maybe they are jealous because, you know, they just think we are on a permanent holiday since more than three years and they don't see all the exhausting things behind, you know. So it took us a while for to explain your mom what we really are doing here. And I think now she has an idea. But all the other ones, I don't think so. Yeah, my mom visited us in Bali last year. And she has seen like what we're doing, living in the truck, driving all these roads. So she got an idea of Indonesia and like getting an impression of, all right, let's drive a truck through Indonesia. And she's like, all right, a bit more challenging maybe, yeah. So but Most of the people think we are crazy. No. And you know, like friendships changed as well, you know, it's like, yeah, like, like life's changing, everything's changing. And what are some of the struggles that maybe people don't understand about this lifestyle? Like give us a, a taste of a day in the life here. <laughs> I think... Um, well, there are even, some easy things. Living three people on 12 square meters, seven days a week, 24 hours. Yeah. So you don't have any privacy. You definitely need to learn that. You don't get, really get the rest. Yeah, Never. you don't get a rest. Not when you're traveling with a kid. Yeah. Which it's... Well, I mean, it's not his fault, but he gets bored and all these kind of things. And you have to animate him, you know? Drug breakdowns, they are pretty heavy. Concerning what's the problem, but yeah. driving time driving is completely time. underestimated yeah. by most of the people because you know, back home you're driving your 100 miles an hour on the freeway with your nice car and you drive whatever 200 miles and you're there in two hours. And 200 miles for us takes us, I don't know, probably six hours, you know. Sometimes yeah. we need to drive two, three thousand kilometers in a row, so that means driving from six, seven, eight a.m. till late. So, and Lennox isn't entertained by us, you know. Many kids, they need an iPad or stuff like that. So, he's really tough and we have driving days. Yeah, well, he's reading the whole day. Yeah, I think these are things people don't get living at home. No, but you can't really understand it until you really live that kind of life. So, it's... Daily routines, you know. Back at home, I know where's my supermarket, where's my dentist, where's my blah, blah, blah. Here, every day, you need to find out. Where can you I get have some to food? invent yourself yeah. more or less every single day, weeks, you know, like depending on visa time, but yeah. But it's, in general, it's easier in, in Western country like Australia or, or the US, but it can get pretty difficult in Central Asia. And is that something that you guys have found yourselves drawn to throughout your lives? Or why do you, why do you choose that kind of suffering? I wouldn't because, call it suffering. Oh, I would call it suffering. Sometimes. Sure. <laughs> no, there is a lot of suffering involved, but um, we also see like the opposite side of the of the coin, you know? So I would say like when you live your normal life, you have your struggle and you have your highs and everything is like, you know, like a mellow wave, you know? Our life is like a huge roller coaster with huge ups and the same like huge downs, you know? So it's way more intense, you know, like the, the frequency. I mean, it's not that we never get any good things as well. I mean, there are heaps of amazing experiences 
absolutely. I'm, I'm pretty thankful still being allowed going out and see all the diversity of our planet. It's still great, exhausting, but great. And, and I think people are good, actually. That's yeah. one of the most important things we've learned in the road, that no matter where you go, you find good people. It's I wouldn't have believed it if I wouldn't have experienced it, but it's... It's absolutely true. And are these these things? Do they help you to keep the wheels moving forward when yeah. you're when yeah. you're having a Definitely. tough day? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We wouldn't be able doing this trip without all the help of all these people outside. Mm. So absolutely. And I mean, give us a I don't know. Do you have a story that comes to mind of of somebody that just saved your butts one day in in Central Asia? Well, we or, could talk about that yeah. the whole <laughs> night. Probably there are heaps. A good one. Whatever. Our transfer case was completely wrecked in the middle of the desert in Iran. And we stranded by accident beside a big sign in Farsi, which we couldn't read. And the truck driver told us like, hey, there is a guy, a mechanic coming to the desert. And he picked us up and we got our transfer case fixed in the middle of nowhere within hours basically you know um we had problems with asbestos for the quarantine thing for australia and um i found a guy by accident on facebook he was willing to fly from australia to indonesia to observe and inspect the truck for free more or less you know so just like paying flight tickets but no labor costs no nothing and it happens yeah absolutely and, and uh i think like you were saying if you if you're just sitting at home you, you can't really believe these things happen mm -hmm. in the world many people i mean people we've met five minutes on the road left us their house keys when they left for holiday and they were like hey feel free to use our house as long as you want like you know like super random people we really we never met before really and what about for lennox what do you think these experiences are creating for him if you could, I mean, he's not here right now. He's actually outside with Alfonso and the rest. And we actually, if you remember, well, I don't know how it's going to roll out, but we do have Deliberate Life bus in this season as well. So Sadie and Ren and Lennox and Alfonso are all playing outside. Who knows what? But they're all there together, reunited, yeah. um, which is awesome. So for Lennox, what do you think this experience is creating for him or, or what's his world view look how does his character change over time i think it's pretty much like our life like a big roller coaster with ups and downs i think it's pretty challenging for him sometimes being the only child with us you know don't having like a brother or a sister friends so i think that's pretty tough for him sometimes but on the other side i mean he loves traveling he loves meeting new kids he loves being out especially he loves like experiencing the variety of the wildlife around the planet and yeah our intention was like getting him out of the bubble world and show him like the two worlds we live in yeah i'm sure you can you know i think as parents we all have these ideas and dreams for our kids and and we do the best we can i mean alfonso asked why are we driving to argentina and then you know the other day i was in the van explaining about dreams and goals and hard work and you know why you know for all for a simple question and and you know really trying to distill yeah a wild idea into why we would do such a thing um hoping that for him it would you know telling him like uh, we're doing this because i want you to realize that you can also do these wild things that you want if you want to go to space if you want to go yeah. to, you know whatever you want to do i want to show you that you can do this because you can watch us struggle through like the things that we want to do yeah. and um you know i think that's something that we all share as you know you look around in this community and, and see what the parents are up to absolutely yeah there are always two sides i think as a parent you hope that you can educate your kids being open-minded helpful and on the other side sometimes i think about maybe lennox is how do you call it so being annoyed of our lifestyle you know driving around day by day, saying goodbye to his friends every day. Sometimes I have the feeling he's also pretty pissed, but I think it's normal, like Leander described, it's a up and down and kids are living in the moment. You always have to they cry don't pace think... for whatever you get. Sure. Yeah. They're seeing just like you got, yeah, they, they have their own struggles to go through sure. as yeah. well. And yeah, goodbyes are hard. That's the hardest part yeah. for the kids. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, what is what is the next few months look like for you guys? You're you've arrived in the states. We are in the southwestern corner in Joshua Tree, and it's really nice and warm here this time of year. 
well, not hot, hot, but nice temperature to, to arrive. But what uh, sounds like you guys are hitting the road tomorrow and where to? Well, we talked yeah. about that actually before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you just kidding. It? We're actually, right. <laughs> uh, we're going on a trip with these guys. Sorry to keep it a secret from you all. We're taking these guys to one of the raddest camp spots we found in the Mojave Desert, surrounded by mountains of boulders, and beautiful cactuses, ancient growth. I mean, there's some of them, it's some of the most amazing cactus garden I've ever seen in my life. And so really excited to take these guys there tomorrow, even though they'll get there before us. And, and then after that, where are you guys going? <laughs> well, after that, we're driving up north to Canada. The stupid thing is that we have to be out of the U.S. mid of April, so we don't have that much time. Yeah, we have about one and a half months left for, yeah. for the United States. And as it seems like it would be a place to stay a little bit longer, um, didn't expect that, to be honest. <laughs> um, but it's a cool place right here. Um, yeah, so we're driving up from here to, well, it's not up, it's east to Arizona, up to Utah, through Montana, Wyoming, up to Calgary and looping around in Canada. Would love to go to Alaska, but bureaucracy, you know, so we'll see. So any of you out there listening, they, these guys, not sure when this episode's coming out, but they will be on the road until mid-April. So if you are in the central west, in the backbone of the Rockies, look out for the, the big blue Akela truck and invite these guys in for a night off the road. If, if you see them, I'm sure they could spin <laughs> yarns for all night with uh, <laughs> stories from, from all over. Um, cool. So then after that, you guys are really, you're three and a half years into a world tour. So after the States and Canada, what, what does the next few years look like? And what's the, what's the dream goal of, of the entire journey? Well, the plan is going down South, South America to Patagonia and ship from there to Africa and going home to Europe towards Africa. From South so Africa. So think a few couple of years more. It depends. It's a rough plan and, and you know plans don't work all the time. It's just an idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll see where we end up. And any any big things you're you're excited about on the either in the trip ahead in the next few months or the next few years? Special places or Yeah, special places or anything in particular. Uh, I'm really excited being in the States and going up to Canada right now because we uh, we haven't seen like proper mountains for the last two years. So I'm really glad being back in the mountains and plan here in the States is focus on climbing and getting up into the winter a little bit, into the snow in Canada. Um, yeah, that's what I'm really excited about. Yeah, You're me too. I'm not. Us. I'm not looking for special places. I'm looking for some family quality time. Doesn't matter if the place is magic or special. I look in family time because it was so last the last couple of years. Right. Even in in Central Asia, even though you were perhaps more isolated from that culture, you didn't found that there. No, we found it there, but you know, like only for a certain amount of time. It's always like when we started in Central Asia, we had, well, in average, like a 30 day visa for each country. And we've crossed about, I don't know, 20 countries in the first year. So it is limited time and you always have to keep going and the climate zones are changing. So you don't want to get stuck in Mongolia or in Siberia in winter with negative 60 degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit, whatever that is in Fahrenheit. Hey, that's not something you guys did, right? No, we just got <laughs> negative 30, but that was in fall and there enough. was enough ready, so that was fine. Uh, so we, we had to keep moving all the time and um, and there's a lot of culture on the way as well. You know, you, you want to learn about the culture and you like, you, you get filled with impressions and never really find the place to reprocess everything and calm down because you always have to keep going. And I think the States is a pretty good place here for doing exactly this one, like really focusing on quality time, going climbing, no more sightseeing. Maybe we'll have a look at the Grand Canyon. We have to discuss that. I'm not sure about it. <laughs> um, so yeah, sounds good so far. And when you look back at what the first year, what the first year years were like, can you, have you learned anything that you carry with you? each day from your first travel or from you know the, those years any routines any hospitality maybe we've learned what hospitality is really meant to be i think we've never really experienced that in europe or particularly in like 
Central Europe, like Austria, Germany, France, the Western civilization. Um, but when you are out of Austria, down in Slovenia, Croatia already, the whole world is completely different. Like people are, they're insanely hospitable. And um, I think that's a big thing we've really learned on the way. Giving yeah, we learned back. in general to keep things simple. It starts with cooking stuff, with clothes, with everything. Keep it simple as much as you can. I think it makes you happier, it's easier. And is that something that you found Lennox is able to do as well? It's hard to learn for him. It's a process. It's a process. Still, yeah. he's a child. No, he didn't learn. <laughs> Sometimes he's doing things. We just look at each other and think, you're so proud being his parents. And sometimes there are things, you're, is that really our kid? He's so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny it's sometimes. It's a good combination. It, it's a good combination. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Another feeling. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So if there's anybody out there considering overlanding around the world or through some of the exotic countries you've been through, such as Tajikistan or Mongolia or Turkmenistan or... Oh, we haven't been there. Oh, sorry. Visa was declined. I thought you had. Um, what advice would you have for, for anybody out there considering taking on such an audacious goal? Besides, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's another topic. Go through there with open eyes. People are so friendly. You just need to allow it. I think one of the... Uh, how should I say that? I think one of the best advices would be like learning how to switch off the Western world's brain, like the Western world system. You know what I mean? It's more like there are so many people traveling around the world or overlanding to Central Asia as well. And most of them are like tourists, you know, like really focusing on hotspots and, you know, like being a tourist and like getting rid of the whole system we, we have learned back home. Because the world is ticking a bit differently in this kind of countries. And it, if you learn how to switch your like learned patterns, if you, uh, if you, I think, I think Maria, I, I mean, I think you, this is, I'm glad you cut this. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's what you were trying to say, you know, go through there with open eyes, but you just have to allow it. And yeah. it's, I was, I was going to ask you, what do you mean by allow it? And I think that's maybe what you're trying to answer Leander, maybe, by yeah. saying that by allowing it, you need to turn off this learned programming mm -hmm. that we all have in the type of lifestyle that we live. And, and the fear. Yeah, the fear yeah. and looking for specific checklists yeah. or, um, you know, experiences that must be had to have yeah. the experience of going exactly. to this place or, yeah. and while not, you know, blowing past this amazing moment that might be happening before yeah. you, but you're too busy thinking about True. the guidebook or exactly. what needs to happen for Stop it. Stop being a tourist mm -hmm. yeah that was a good explanation hey now i'm a, I'm a translator i i took german yeah, in college but that's, that's uh, perfect but you're pretty good in austria man oh <laughs> uh, it's embarrassing i didn't even tell these guys that yeah so thank you for doing this in english a lot of our a lot of our interviewees are from other countries and so you know it's really a big part about this podcast is bringing in an international perspective but always appreciate you folks that can bring the English to us, even if it's not your uh, mother tongue. So thank you. You can translate this interview <laughs> afterwards as well, if you want. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, I think, I think that's all for me. Do you have anything else that you want to share that we didn't touch on? Damn it, there will be a lot of things. Well, first of all, thanks a lot for visiting us here in the truck and doing this podcast. Yeah, and thanks for actually <laughs> visiting you and letting us stay in your house. Yeah. <laughs> Big thank you. Yeah. No problem. We're happy to happy to host world travelers and I don't know why, but ever since I was young and met my first foreign abroad students, actually there were two guys, two Germans on my soccer team and uh, I took them home for like two weeks and I don't know, I always took the study abroad foreign exchange students home with me and showed them a good time and um, I just remember Thanksgiving, like drinking shots with my family and we were like 17 and we've never been able to do that before, but because I had my foreign friends there, um, it was totally cool, you know, <laughs> and, uh, all the girls were all about the like German, you know, soccer, all-star boys. So it was, uh, it was a good time. 
So yeah, this is just like now we're doing it as grown ups and we have families and mm. big trucks and yeah. big toys and <laughs> True. a yeah. little bit more consequences and I understand the pain of, of traveling on the road and not having a shower or what have you for weeks on end. So happy to share. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, cool. Well, like I said, you can um, you can follow these guys on Instagram at Akela dot world or Akela world, Akela dot world. And you guys are, do you promote anywhere else in particular? Do you want to send any traffic to any places on your website? Maria has been writing a ton of blogs. So it's www.akela.world. And um, Leander also does a ton of photography and that can be found. Oh, on stocksy.com slash Nox, N-O-X. In case you need some kick-ass photography from around the world. Buy it. <laughs> now. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much. Safe travels on the road. And we will see you on the Pan American Highway somewhere That'll be cool. along the way. <laughs> All right. Yeah. For uh, for the uh, next season, I don't know, maybe season eight, season 10. We'll have a, <laughs> a second story. We will. Okay. That's it. Thanks, guys. Thank you. So... We are just one year into our trip and I'm, you know, almost can't even fathom doing what Leander and Maria and Lennox have done so far. It, it's really jarring when you put it into perspective, just what they've gone through and what they've accomplished so far. It's, it's really incredible. Make sure you check out these guys on Instagram at Akela World. Maria writes an incredible blog on their website, Kayla.world. It is in German, so you'll have to have some sort of translator. But I know they spend a lot of time on this stuff. And, you know, Leander takes some incredible photographs that are available for sale on his stock site. But feel free to check those out and support him if you ever have a need for that kind of photography. Thanks for tuning in this week, guys. Stay safe out there. Uh, another week of the coronavirus as this thing unfolds. I am not sure what state everyone's in since I recorded this a couple weeks ago now, but I am hoping that you are all safe and healthy and getting into your groove, whatever that may be as our world continues to evolve. This week's episode had editing and sound design by Mercedes Riva and music by Tomas Tyrell. You can find out more about our guests on our Instagram stories at Afuera Vida or our blog at afueravida.com. And if you're interested in being part of the community, please use the hashtag Rewilding Parenthood. Last but not least, if you like what you hear, please consider leaving us a review or a rating on Apple Podcasts. That really helps us and, and helps us reach other families or parents looking to hear this kind of message. And that's it for me this week. Stay safe out there. Tune on back next week for Number One Bus and their story of converting their 28-foot Blue Jay school bus into their home. See you all here next week. Adios. Adios.